Hey there, Workflowy folks. Over the past two months, the team has released a bunch of exciting new features. And so we thought we would put them together in a single video so you could see all the new things that you can now do inside of Workflow. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first feature is monochrome emojis. If you've ever pasted a emoji inside of Workflow, this is the sort of thing you would see. And they're great. They're bright, they're friendly, they're colorful, but they clash a little bit with Workflow's minimalist design. So if you've ever felt that you might prefer a slightly more subdued type of icon, then monochrome emojis are for you. So the way we turn them on is we go into the settings panel and under the appearance section, we have some little emojis and by default, it's set to system, which are just the regular emojis. Click on that. We can switch now to noto emoji, which are monochrome emojis, just black and white, really nice, really clean, more subdued and simple. Next up, we have shortcuts. Shortcuts are a really powerful way to quickly move around workflowy using only your keyboard. So you can set a keyboard shortcut to any item in Workflow by simply putting your cursor on that item, going slash shortcut. You'll get this little window and here you can set any key combination that you want. It can be one letter, a word, two letters, whatever you like, and then just save it as shortcut. So I'm just gonna do that right now. Hit enter and now I have that shortcut. And I can use that shortcut in a bunch of different places. In the jump to menu, if I wanna navigate from one item to another, in the move to, mirror to, and move to child slash commands as well. I just can type whatever my shortcut is and hit enter and it'll either move the item, mirror that item, or move to the child of that item. Navigate to a completely different place in my account, hit the jump to menu, type sh, hit enter, and there we go, I've navigated back to where I set my shortcut. You can set as many of these as you want. Now you can also resize board columns. In any Kanban board, you simply move your cursor over any one of the dividing lines separating the different columns and click and drag to resize the call. And it's going to save that width. So if I make it very small, I close my workflow account, open it back up. It's still going to be this size. So I can just set it to whatever I like, whatever makes sense for me. Next up is the new dark theme, Neo, which you're currently previewing right now. So let me go ahead and jump back to the standard dark theme so you can see the difference. So as you can see, the default dark theme is dark, but it's a little bit brighter. It's a little bit bluer. And so we wanted something that's just a little bit darker, a real dark mode. So you can change that by going to the settings panel under appearances and choosing the new Neo theme. And here's what that looks like, just so you get an idea of the different colors and highlights and things. Next up, we have a really exciting AI feature, which are called smart notes. So the way that we use this is we use the slash command slash AI, hit enter, and now we can ask anything about the nearest node. So for example, let's say I've got some text that I copied and pasted from Wikipedia, and I want to ask about what in the world are hash functions. What are hash functions? And so now when the AI responds, the respond will be not in a chat window, but right in my workflow account. And I can either accept the response or reject it. If I reject it, it'll just remove it. If I accept it, it'll turn it into standard workflowy items. So paragraphs, bullet points, to do's, all the regular workflow stuff. And I can modify it, move it around, do whatever I want. So it's a much nicer way to quickly generate content, put it in your account, and then do something with it. Next up is the move to child slash command. So this is a little bit different than the regular move to command, which allows us to select an item and move it anywhere in our account. The move to child lets us select the children of that item. So an example of where something like this might be useful is, let's say I've got these different projects and inside of each one of these, I have nodes that have the same names, right? There's nothing different about them. Let's say I've got some daily meeting notes that I wanna put into this item specifically. So the way that I would do that previously would be a little bit difficult because I would select meetings, but it would also find this meetings and this meeting. And imagine if I had a bunch of the same item all across my account, it'd be kind of difficult to choose the right one. But I know that it's the meetings inside Valkyrie. So what I can do is go move to child, find the right node, the parent node, and now I can select any of the children nodes for that item. So meetings, and there we go. I moved it specifically under the Valkyrie project and into the meeting section. Next, we have the sort slash command. And the way that it works is any item that holds items that you want to sort. So for example, this one right here, uh, I want to sort the dates. I just go slash sort and it'll let me sort items 
alphabetically or in inverse alphabetical order. And this will also apply to dates. So as long as the date tag is at the start of the node, I'll be able to sort these as well. Next up is desktop quick add. So this works on the desktop application. And the way that it works is on Windows, you hit Windows Alt N. On Mac, you hit Option Command N. And you get this little window. It's looking a little bit funky because I'm zoomed in just for the recording. On your screen, it's going to look the right size and your buttons will be easy to click. But basically what this allows you to do is quickly add anything into an inbox in your workflow account. So you can copy some text, quickly add it into your inbox, add some links, or any markdown that you want to put will also be supported. So all you have to do is paste whatever content you want in here, hit enter or save, and it'll send it to a inbox node at the very top of your workflow account. If you don't have an inbox node, it'll automatically create one and put the stuff in there. You can now also share images if you have the app installed on your Android device. The way you do that is you just find an image you want, long press the image, tap share, and then select workflow, and it'll send it automatically to your inbox item. If you don't have one, an inbox item will automatically be created at the very top of your account. You can now change the color or highlight of multiple items at once by simply selecting the items you want to color. And in the multi item menu, click on text slash highlight color and choose the text color or the highlight color. You can now add dividers anywhere in your account by simply adding three horizontal lines and a space. And you can move it anywhere you want, just like any other item by clicking on the bullet, dragging it around and placing it anywhere you want. We have two new search operators for you. The first one is link colon, and this allows you to search not the text of a link, which we can see right here, but actually the URL of a link. So for example, this one right here uh, has cool website, but actually the link is hackernews.com. So if I wanted to search for anywhere that I linked to Hacker News, previously I wouldn't be able to do that because we didn't search through the URLs, we only searched the text. Now I simply type link colon in the search and then whatever I'm looking for in the URL and it'll filter that. And we also have is colon divider, which as you can imagine, allows you to find all the horizontal dividers in your account. You can now choose the start day of the week. Previously, you could only have it set to Sunday. Now you can choose between Sunday or Monday, and that affects natural language search. So now you can perform searches like last week, and it'll include all the items, including Monday of that week. So for example, this day specifically is Monday. And you set this by going into the settings panel and under dates, there is a section called start of the week, and you just change that to Monday if you prefer. And you can now also log in with your Google account. If you previously signed up to Workflow using a Gmail account, you can choose to log in with Google and our system will automatically detect that. We'll link the two accounts and you can choose to either continue logging in by typing in the full Gmail address or clicking login with Google and you'll log into the same account. And finally, we have a new slash command for templates. So the way that this works is you go slash template and there's an add from template action. If you hit enter, you can now search across your entire account for all the items that have hashtag template. So now no matter where you've created your templates or where they are, if they're scattered throughout your entire account, you can quickly find them as long as you know the name and insert them anywhere you want. So that's it for this roundup of the previous two months of updates. We hope you find something in here that sparks your interest. Be sure to let us know by leaving a comment and letting us know what you think about the new features, what else you'd like to see us add or anything else you'd like to share with us. So until then, I'll see you in the next update.